Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my virgin kitchen. Today I'm trying a Spanish tapas dish. Wow! Patatas bravas! Ah, uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen mofo, ain't no time to slack, so just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother, just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Okay, so I am off to Spain tomorrow for a couple of days on a stag do and I'm not going to lie, probably going to have quite a bit of Jägermeister. So, I love Spanish food and I thought I'd have a go at making something called patatas bravas. And if you're Spanish and you're watching this, I apologise. I'm probably going to do something wrong, but it's going to taste good, right? Spanish love. Here's the ingredients. Hit pause, write them all down. Let's get cooking, because i got a plane to catch, baby. Alright, so first up I've got some potatoes and these are like little baby ones, all good. And I'm going to leave the skin on them and just slice them like into three little triangle shapes like this, kind of like small and they're just like, like earrings. No, potatoes. So once you've cut up your potatoes, grab yourself a tea towel which doubles up as a turban as you see me do before and just like wipe, just give it a little dab, not individually like that, that would take ages. Just get it over there, rub it, get them all nice and dry, pat dry and get some of that starch off baby. Okay, I'm not going to lie, I can't find my roasting tin so I found a cake tin which will do exactly the same job. So I'm going to pour in our dried potatoes right into there. Even this one here that's trying to escape. No! In you go. Okay, so I lost that one. Spread them all around, get them nice and flat on there. And now we drizzle them in olive oil. Alright, a fairly decent helping of olive oil. About two or three tablespoons. Now let's go for two and a half tablespoons in there. So it's almost sort of treading water in it. It's not completely like over the top of it, but just enough. And then we'll give it a little season of ground black pepper initially. Oh yeah, of course this is optional. Don't have to do that. So our tray normally used for making cakes is going in that middle shelf for a good hour. About half an hour in, I'm gonna sort of turn it around a little bit. I wanna get them nice and roasted. And the last 10 minutes, why am I doing that? Why am I doing that? I don't know. Uh, we'll chuck in some chorizo with it to give it some nice flavor and those oils in there are gonna merge and make some big sort of Spanish machine. Ole, ole. So moving on, we're gonna make a wickedly delicious sauce for that sitting. It's gonna have a real smoky tang to it as well with the paprika. Oh my gosh, I love paprika and I love chorizo. I think I'm gonna be in heaven right now. Oh, oh. Uh, I just wanna show you uh, this bowl that I bought. Check this out. We're gonna sit it all in at the end. It's kind of like a tapas dish, this. Tapas, not as in where you tap your ass. Sorry. Uh, look, I like it, because you can sort of just go like that, maybe. Let's make the sauce. Okay, so that right there is a little sauce pan and I'm gonna put some oil on it. Oh yeah, about a tablespoon, and that my friend is on a low heat. Just want to warm that oil up before chucking some onions. So chop up an onion nice and fine, if you haven't done it already. Right, those are my uh, chopped onions, and then they go. Wow! So we're just going to fry up that onion for about four or five minutes on its own before adding in some garlic, uh, which is good if you've got vampires in your kitchen. I haven't really. You know, those onions are having so much fun in there. What I want to do is take off my flip-flops, as you can see I'm wearing flip-flops today, and I'm going to put my foot in that pan with it. They're having so much fun in there, I'm jealous of it. If I did that, that would hurt my foot. So uh, let's just get the garlic in there. This is two garlic cloves chopped up, and in it goes. We are! Straight like that. Pour in some chopped tomatoes. And you might have been able to hear that first of all, but they were having one heck of a battle in there. It's like going, no, 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 but now it's nice and calm and soothing. So what we'll do is chuck in some other ingredients and bring it up to a nice old simmer. Look at that onion trying to get away. Oi, and you. So uh, make sure all your onions in there. That's simmering away lovely. Let's make it a tomato party. I'm gonna pour in about a little teaspoon of honey, or you could just chuck some sugar in. Oh yeah. This is some tomato puree, and I'm just gonna go like that. Oh yeah, oh look at that runny. That could say something rude there, but I'm not gonna. Tablespoon of that. Some more pepper, about a teaspoon of ground pepper. Oh yeah. Little sprinkling of chili powder. I'm a huge fan of smoked paprika. You could just use normal paprika. 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 Um, but I'm just going to chuck in about two teaspoons of that. And I might do another sneaky one off the camera. Oh my goodness. I really want this to be paprika heaven. Just loving it. Just loving it. All right. So that's what we're looking like at the moment. It's still quite smooth, but you can see there is a thickness there. By simmering it for a good 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes, get it nice and thick. And then later on, we're going to smother it on that chorizo and potatoes. And it's going to be gorgeous. I hope. Perdone, senor. If you were speaking to a man. Your man. Your man. Perdone, senor. Perdone, senor. And if Spanish. you were talking to a woman, you could say. Perdone, senora. Perdone, senora. Perdone, senora. Perdone. Ah, 
I'm just going to give up. You know, I can speak French. I can say bonjour, au revoir. And, you know, if you can't speak French, you can always kiss that way. I just try to learn some Spanish. It's not working. But I just take my potatoes out, span them around. They're brown one side, the other side was going, no, cook me. Flip them over. In a bit, we're going to chuck in the chorizo for about the last 10 minutes. And that sauce is simmered down. It is so thick. I can paint my walls with it, baby. And that is what I'm after. Hola. Alrighty, I've just taken my potatoes out of the oven. As you see, they're nice and brown. There's still a little bit of cooking left in them. There was a lot of oil in there, which I've just poured all away very carefully, especially with my uh, flip-flop feet. Oh, that would have hurt. But the oil will now come from our chorizo, which I've got nice, finely chopped chorizo like that. You could get a big chorizo sausage uh, and then uh, chop it up like that. Nice little chunks, completely up to you. So all I'm going to do is just scatter the chorizo just in there with that. Do -do 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 -do. Straight back in the oven now at the same temperature for around about 10 minutes. Let all those oils like go round, cover the potatoes in loving, sausage chorizo loving, and then we'll get it out, chuck it in with our thick sauce, and we're done. We're done. Let's see if my phone knows what we're making. Hopefully I can pronounce it right. Patatas bravas. I don't understand. Attack Barabbas. <laughs> Research the web for it. Attack Barabbas. Well, that sounds like some movie. In fact, thank you. That is, I'm going to write that down. That is going to be a movie we're going to release. My Virgin Kitchen. My Virgin Kitchen in Attack Barabbas. Guess what, people? La cena esta lista. For those of you that aren't very good at Spanish, that meant dinner is ready, baby. Look, there's potatoes and the chorizo. You see this little oil drizzling off there? I'm just gonna fish slice that out and just spoon it into the bottom of the bowl. Oh my, look at that extra oil there from the chorizo. So, so good. Just get that all scattered in the bottom. Wow, I would just eat that on its own, to be honest. And now, as you can see, that's reduced right down. We've got this nice pulpy color thing there. I'm just gonna spoon it. I'm just gonna spoon a little bit like that on the top like this, just so you can still see that chorizo and potato loving around the side. Now, I know what my friend Ollie would say to this. Look, I'm just sprinkling some parsley on the side. Wow. He would say, Ole, because his name's Ollie. Get it? Oh, gosh. Right, I can't wait to eat this. Yeah. So I'm going to eat this proper tapas style on a cocktail stick. Here we go. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wow, that went down so quick. I want to eat some more. That came at me like a Red Bull. A Red Bull. <laughs> That's a drink. A ball to a red rag like that. Wow, full of flavour. And I love how the chorizo was hidden in there with the tomatoes. Absolutely loving it. So simple to put together. And I'm going to try and find the proper stuff in Madrid when I go there. Wow, that is good. So if I can make that, absolutely anyone in the world can. Am I praying? I'm not praying. Have a go for yourself. Let me know how you get on. And I'll see you again next time. Ole. Thanks for watching My Virgin Kitchen. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and share on your social media network thingamajig of choice. Over there on the right hand side is the last video I did, which was liver. Just liver. My food fear of liver. I'm trying to get over it. Did it work? Check the video out and find out for yourself.